to him. Uh, plays, uh, novels, uh, histories, uh, pamphlets, uh, letters, uh, critical essays, uh, to take on all established social and religious beliefs uh, that were held in the continent of Europe. Uh, and these lampoons of all kinds soon make him a marked man. Uh, Voltaire is even impudent enough to challenge an aristocrat, the Chevalier Le Rahan, to a duel. Uh, the Chevalier is not amused and sends his servants to beat him up. Uh, and the aristocrats slowly close rank against Voltaire, and the author spends two more years in the Bastille. Uh, now, in 1726, Voltaire is persuaded uh, to flee the country uh, and ends up landing in England, uh, driven into self-imposed exile. Uh, his philosophical ideas begin to deepen. Uh, the two years he spends in England are a type of intellectual turning point for him. Uh, he admires the high level of freedom uh, and the respect for the individual that he finds on English soil. Uh, this gives him uh, the yard stick uh, with which he uh, is, well, he's going to spend the rest of his life beating the French over the head with it. Now, uh, this new liberalism of John Locke that I talked about in the first segment, well, his writings contribute uh, to uh, Voltaire's new body of ideas. And throughout the remainder of an uncommonly long writing career uh, provides him uh, with the staple intellectual content of his work. Uh, the staple being uh, that the established social and religious beliefs that are supported by little more than the authority of the Christian churches and the state begin to collapse when they are subjected to rational inquiry. Uh, France, to Voltaire, uh, is ruled by individual despots who flout the law. Uh, these despots work hand in hand uh, with an intolerant Catholic Church uh, that uses political power for purposes of oppression and persecution. Uh, Voltaire will spend the remainder of his life demanding change, change without violence. And the author becomes the spiritual godfather of revolutionary free thinking. Uh, during the two and a half years of his self-imposed exile in England, Voltaire writes a series of letters, letters that are the first bombs hurled against the ancient regimes and traditional institutions of Europe. These letters are soon published uh, in a book in Paris. Uh, the book is called On the English. Uh, the book is, of course, officially banned, and its sale is absolutely for, uh, forbidden, verboten, in France. The book starts with four letters on religion in England. Uh, Voltaire is attracted by the Quakers uh, and their simple, undogmatic, and practical embodiment of spiritual and moral values. Uh, he pokes gentle fun at the Quakers, uh, but is also deeply impressed by the fact that the Quaker faith is not dominated by a priesthood. Uh, Voltaire is sick to death of the Catholic Church's intolerance, and he also devotes a letter each to the Angelicans, Presbyterians, and smaller religious sects of England. Uh, Voltaire is far from indifferent to religion. In fact, he is haunted by it his entire life. Uh, and the author constantly asks himself, if God does not exist, would we have to invent him? Now, in the English letters, Voltaire also pokes fun at the antics of the House of Commons and the practice of English politics. Uh, but he makes it clear that he admires the English political system and the concept of limited constitutional monarchy. Uh, to Voltaire, England, ever since the signing of the Magna Carta in 1215, uh, had been, has been slowly developing towards equality for all under the law. The author then returns to France and continues to write plays, uh, histories like uh, Charles XII and Louis XIV. Uh, he also writes his philosophical letters and speaks out against established religion and political systems. Voltaire must again flee Paris. Uh, and decides to settle at Circe uh, in the uh, Champagne region of France. The Madame du Chalet 
a uh, sexually aggressive, free-thinking woman, becomes Voltaire's mistress and patroness. Uh, and Voltaire dedicates himself to scientific research and begins to systematically study uh, uh, work on religions and cultures. Uh, circa 1750, the author accepts an invitation from Frederick II, the King of Prussia, uh, and Voltaire journeys to Berlin. Now, Frederick II, also known as Frederick the Great, uh, came to the throne of Prussia uh, around 1740 uh, and was officially the head of the majority Lutheran Church. Uh, but, uh, well, Frederick uh, is an agnostic and a Freemason, uh, and while still only a uh, crown prince, writes an attack on the cynicism of the Machiavellian politics uh, uh, and proves his interest and love for art, music, and poetry. Uh, the monarch also ends all inquiries into all types of heresy and grants the Jews in Prussia increased civil liberties. Uh, he has kept up a vivid, flowing correspondence with Voltaire for a number of years. Now, Voltaire spends three years... Uh, at the court of Frederick the Great, uh, but soon becomes disillusioned uh, when uh, Voltaire discovers that his political and philosophical ideas uh, were actually not much valued by Frederick. Uh, Voltaire is simply in Berlin to amuse the monarch and uh, correct and praise uh, Frederick's French poetry. By 1754, uh, Voltaire settles in Switzerland, uh, where he will basically spend the remainder of his life, aside from occasional trips and his final journey to Paris.